that's what makes the Tao Te Ching so divine is that the author a truly blessed soul tried as, as, as hard as he could to maintain enough objectivity to leave absent from the work his own subjectivity the time and the place where he was when he conceived of it it's time it's timeless it's a timeless work and what is in nature what is the basic message of the Tao that the way is the way and that we can't know the way but we can strive for the way which is essentially saying the same thing that we can say 2,500 years later. We know we know because those of us who know, know we don't know. And we know they don't know because those who don't know claim they know. And here we are 2,500 years later still stuck with the same thing. I mean, the majority of the people that we're forced to live with claim they know when those of us who know we don't know and know they don't know know they don't know I hope you're following me it's a quandary and as long as we stay busy wake up and <laughs> do our thing then it's not a problem because we just don't think about it it's in those quiet moments. It's in those moments when time slows down and you become truly alone in the universe with nothing but you and the divine itself that you remember just how innocent and ignorant and alone we truly are. You know I don't have any doubts about meeting the divine when I die. And I think that's a gift. They call that the gift of faith. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gone to sleep doubting the divine. And what's funny is I consider the divine not only powerful, but I also consider the divine to be good. Which is funny, and it's ironic. Because that's absolutely impossible. You can't have a divine that's all good, that controls a world that is so truly fucked up. Theoretically, I mean physically, mathematically, any physicist would tell you it's impossible. Any logician would tell you it's impossible. And yet I believe we cling to that idea of an all-powerful and all-good God force out of the want of safety and security. And if we truly face the reality of it, children lost at sea, you know, abandoned by their parents, sink or swim, I think we'd all go fucking mad. I think that's why it's so important to the powers that be to keep religions in the hearts and minds of men. You know, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I think that you have to be very responsible to come to terms with our isolation and our ignorance and still be a good, responsible human being. It's only the wisest among us that could do that.
<laughs> you know, and yet I don't doubt it. Spiritually, that is. I mean, in my heart, if I close my eyes, you know, you can feel the divine. It's that force that's within us. It's that force that makes me be able to do this. Just by thinking about it. What is that? What is that? It's a force. And it's a force that we haven't been able to nail down with science. What is that matter moving through space? Through thought energy. I think it, therefore I can do it. I can think it, I can do it, therefore I am. It has to be a force behind that. And yet that force doesn't have to be all good. Perhaps there is that force which is omnipotent. A force that controls and creates and sustains everything. And perhaps divinity itself is a separate force, a separate entity, which isn't omnipotent. It's not as powerful as the omnipotent force. You know, the Gnostics, who were a group of, of more esoteric Christians back in the early stages of Christianity, when it was still primarily Jewish, they referred to two gods, God and then the all that is, which was the God behind the God, that the God of man serves another deeper, more powerful God. And in the book of Genesis, in the Torah, it opens up in several sentences, God actually refers to himself as we and us, as if there are two gods. And that would make more sense. The God behind the scenes, which is the all that isness, which is in fact omnipotent, it's the force that controls all the other forces in the universe and it's heartless. It's not cruel. It's just not good either. It's neutral. It's the supreme God. The supreme force. And then there's the divine God, which we created. We don't have a proof of, of a divine God. In fact, if you took the human equation out of it completely and you just looked at the way the universe worked, the way that the rest of the animals just hunt each other down and eat each other. You know, it's survival of the fittest. So I think the idea of a divine God or a holy God or a sacred God or a good God, I think that's something that is unique just to the minds of humankind. And that's okay. Because through our thoughts, perhaps by now, we've created that God. I mean, think about how many people who have died over the last 30,000 years, the last million years. How long have we been creating gods now? 10,000 years? So think of all the people who have died over the last 10,000 years. The soul is in I'll give you that. We're never born and we never die. We just reincarnate in different form. So all these souls that exist in different forms who have passed on from their human form, they carry with them this concept of the good God. And perhaps through that, their energies collect to create 
what we know now as a good God or divinity. It's that good God versus the all-powerful, neutral, uncaring God. And in that, perhaps, we find the struggle or the battle between good and evil. A conscious Satan who wants to do evil? Not in a million fucking years. But a good God created by man, by the mind and heart and the hand of man, versus a neutral, all-powerful God that is nothing more than a force? That's plausible. And that's something to believe in. I'll tell you that. Tell you something else too. No matter how many times we think about it, talk about it, read about it, we still end up in the same place. We could have the same conversation every night for the next 50 years. We're still going to end up in the same place, not knowing and wondering. I wonder why that's not a deeper fear for most people. Do you think it's just because they keep themselves so busy that they never think about it? Or do you think it's because when they do think about it, they just immediately grasp at the closest indoctrination they can find in their mind? So they tell themselves, that's a ridiculous thing to think about. God is good. God loves us. We're going to go to heaven. Grandma's in heaven. Her little dog. He's in heaven. And then they just go on with their day. And then they teach that to their children. And it just gets passed on and passed on. You know, and over centuries and millennia, we change those ideas, we reshape them, and we tell ourselves, now we know, now we're right. Before we didn't know, now we know. Before we weren't quite right, now we are right. And that's funny. I mean, that's truly funny. We always think we're right now. We always think in the past we were wrong. So if we step back and we tell ourselves into the future, how will we change what we currently believe about God 